Hey, welcome back everybody to the Able Farmer channel. Uh, today is a much nicer day out here, can't you see? At least I'm not getting soaked. So uh, I was doing some thinking, I'm about ready to butcher these birthday chickens. And it got me to thinking that maybe some of you guys have considered dabbling in raising your own meat. And maybe you don't believe that you live in an area that, that is possible. Maybe you just live on a small piece of land or in the suburbs of a city. And raising these birthday chicks have really made me realize that anybody can do this. And I just wanted to show you the basic setup. Now, if you are just joining the channel and you wonder what I keep calling the birthday chicks, um, my son Cohen and my daughter Eliana are having a birthday party here in the next few weeks at my house. And I thought it'd be cool to raise up our own barbecue chicken. So what I did is I ordered about 25 Cornish game hens, which as far as I know, is just a Cornish cross that's a female. And, uh... I decided I was going to raise them to about five weeks old and I was going to butcher myself and they'd be a perfect little barbecued chicken sized piece of meat at the end. And I have uh, the two chicken tractors I built. I have the peacocks in one and I also have my broiler chickens in the other so I didn't know where to put them. So I just grabbed this dog cage that I had in the basement and I put them in there and I had them about 12 at a time. Uh, if you look back at my video, I ordered my first batch and realized that maybe it wasn't enough, so then I ordered a second batch two weeks later. And I just wanted to show you my setup here and show you how easy this is. And I really encourage you guys to consider maybe trying this. This would be a great way to start out on broiler chickens. And I just wanted to show you the basic setup. For... So right here's the setup. I have my little broiler chickens inside this dog crate. I have a shower curtain for the top right here to keep the weather off of them uh, a tarp obviously would do fine but i just needed something real quick and i ran to the dollar store and they didn't have tarps so i picked up a shower curtain a little bit redneck but <laughs> it works but uh you can see they're living in here there's plenty of space for them at this age and you get your feed and your water and which you know I ran them out of feed on purpose because I'm about to process these guys I'm telling you I cannot express how easy this is I you keep them in a brewer for about three weeks two and a half to three weeks depending on the weather in your area until they feather out so you, you need maybe a big sterilite tote of some sort and you keep them in the garage and they're not it's not too big of a deal in about three weeks you move them out into the yard and uh, when I say yard, I mean literally just the yard. You do not need much yard to do this pasture poultry in this way. This right here is outside my back patio from the corner of the garage to here. This is all the yard I used. You do not need a farm. You do not need acres of land if you just have a yard. The only thing that I recommend is potentially if you have your yard treated by a yard treating service or whatever, then you may want to reconsider putting your chickens out in the yard. Uh, I don't treat my yard with anything, so this grass is totally fine. And I can see them right now, they're down there eating grass. And uh, what a easy way to have pasture poultry. These guys make no noise at all. Just the tiniest little cheeps, I can barely hear them from here. But uh, they're not gonna disturb your neighbors. You put a tarp over them, most people are doing by going by won't even know what they are and maybe you can go in on a neighbor if your yard is too small go in with a neighbor and share your yards and you're gonna get these little squares in the yard right here but those will quickly go away and your grass will probably grow back even better than it did before which could be good or bad depending on how you look at it um, but I just wanted to encourage you guys you know maybe maybe consider getting into this if you entertain the idea of doing this and you worried and you worry that maybe you can't, this is easy. And you're talk, talking, you know, start out 15 chickens, that's 30 meals of pastured poultry. And you do it for cheap. These guys gone through hardly any food at this age. Uh, maybe two bags of feed. And uh, you can raise 15 chickens for the price of the chickens, say about 250 a piece. You figure you got 30 35 dollars in the chickens and you got maybe 20 dollars in the feed and that's that's really it so for 50 bucks you get 30 meals i mean that's pretty darn cheap and i can assure you that the quality of this meat is going to be better than 
anything that you pick up at your local grocery store. And you also get the satisfaction of knowing that you did this yourself, you raised them yourself, you're much more connected to your food. And a lot of us, you know, a lot of us really appreciate that connection with our food. You know, as society goes along, it, it seems like we're pushing towards the direction of, you know, a more ethical way of raising meat. In fact, they're actually moving into growing meat in a laboratory and not actually killing an animal at all. And a lot of people say that's the future. But I actually see a lot of people moving in this direction. Being more connected with our food and raising it ourselves, hands-on experience. I think this is the future that a lot of people are moving towards is actually having that one-on-one -on -one connection with their animals and their feed and everything raised and grown right there on their own property and i i am definitely in that that camp because i don't think it sounds good to have my meat grown in a test tube and uh i'd much rather have them be growing right here in my backyard so um anyway i just want you guys to consider that and i'm gonna go ahead and process these guys now because they are now five weeks old that's it so three weeks in a brooder two weeks in pasture and they're ready. This is all louder they are. And uh, anyway, we're going to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these guys out of here and these guys processed, okay? All right. All right, I have the slow growing white broilers that I processed the other day in the rain. I let them rest in the refrigerator for two days and I just packaged them up. And I wanted to show you guys right here. This is a slow growing white broiler on the left and this is a Cornish cross on the right. You can see size wise, they are just about identical. You can see that the slow growing white broiler is a little bit longer with a little bit more pronounced keel bone right there where the Cornish cross has that, that real wide big breast that uh, they're kind of known for. Um, so there is a slight difference between the carcass weight but overall I'm still fairly impressed and uh, It'll also come down to when I actually try them and do a little bit of a taste test. So, um, so there you have it. The two side by side, they uh, they both look really good actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and package up these birthday chicks. I just finished them and uh, they're ready to be packaged. All right, here they all are. I cannot express enough how easy these are to do. Um, as far as raising meat chickens, this was extremely easy. I did use my plucker over there. Um, that did speed up the process. However, for these little tiny chickens, uh, it's a little bit overkill. It kind of beats them around really bad. And sometimes I get some broken, broken bones. For instance, like right here, this chicken right here I broke. Uh, broke the bone on the leg right there um, That happens sometimes with this plucker because they're so light that it just throws them around in there so hard But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and package these guys up and I just wanted to show you You know in five weeks, you know each one of these is a meal for each person and I already did a round of these So I have just as many of these already in the freezer um, so I just wanted to show you guys the finished product Here they are. Alright, I want to show you guys the freezer in my garage. I want to show you all the hard work I've done so far this year. We are loaded with chicken. With a couple turkeys in there too. And I still have, I believe, 11 slow-growing white broilers to process. And I have about five turkeys I need to process. And that'll be it as far as meat for the year. Um, thinning out all my flock to get ready for winter. To, so, uh, just wanted to show you guys. That, to me, is pretty impressive. All right. All right, I thought I'd take the opportunity here to get a weight on Frank. Anybody curious on how much he weighs? Anybody got a guess? I'm gonna go get him out of here and we're gonna find out. <laughs> I 
There he is. That's a big chicken. I'm gonna get a weight on him. Okay, we're gonna zero out the net. Place him. Take two. Ten nine nine. He's eleven pounds. It's eleven pound chicken right there, and he's still going, running around. Sure, his band ain't too tight. I think he's all right. All right, we're gonna put him back. Eleven pound chicken. He's still going strong. All right, guys, I got one final thing I want to show you. These turkeys are not gonna leave me alone. But I wanted to show you. Let me feed these guys real quick. Get them out of my hair. All right, sorry about that. Uh, I want to show you guys my rabbits. There's Frisco. I left her with my buck for about seven days. So hopefully they figured out what they're supposed to do in seven days. If not, then we may have issues. However, I do have a plan B here. If you look in here with my buck, I now have another New Zealand doe. And uh, I put her in there last night. And I think I'm going to put her in there. I'm going to leave her in there until tomorrow. And her, she should be bred. And she is a proven doe. She had a litter that has just turned eight weeks old. So they should definitely be able to figure out what they're supposed to be doing. But they almost look identical. He's just a little bit bigger. Uh, pretty rabbits, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, she's really friendly. And you can hold her. And she likes being held. And... Uh, and I, I'd hate to give up on her too because she's a real pretty chestnut collar and hopefully they figured it out. I'm going to get uh, her nesting box in there within a few days probably. And uh, hopefully I will finally get bunnies on the homestead. If not, I don't know what else to do because uh, they're supposed to just kind of do this themselves. So um, anyway, we're going to give it a try and um, hopefully we'll get things figured out this time. Alright guys, that's the video. Looks like I got blood all over my face. That's kind of kind of gross. But anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. And if you could please subscribe to my channel and like the video, I would greatly appreciate that. And hopefully, I can keep bringing some quality homesteading content to you guys. And I appreciate your support. So, like I said, enjoy your evening, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hmm. <laughs> hmm.